Hey guys, this is Mr. Post, and on today's extra help session, we're going to be looking at scientific notation and just practicing a, a couple problems only. We're not going to be doing a lot of work here. Just want to practice a few problems and just uh, give you a little extra help on it. Alright, so here we have two numbers that I'd like you to put into scientific notation. And maybe you want to press the pause button, the pause bar at the top of the screen, and just to give yourself a shot at doing this by yourself before I do it, I'm definitely going to explain it. So if you want to press pause, go for it right now, because otherwise we're going to be solving this problem. Let's throw these two numbers into scientific notation. Now two things I want you to really focus on is moving your decimal place in between the first two numbers, and also finishing your answer off with the correct number of significant figures. So that's pretty essential for us here, okay? So I want to make sure I have my scientific notation correct, but I also want to make sure that I have my significant figures correct too. So here we go. Wherever there's no decimal place, I always just do this. I kind of make a fake one. All right, it really doesn't exist. So in this case, I'm going to move my decimal place a few places here. I'm going to move it in between these two numbers. Let's move it. I moved it one, two, three places. And so my new answer is simply going to be 6.000 times 10 to the third or is it going to be 6 times 10 to the third? Which one do you think it's going to be? I moved the decimal place three places. One, two, three. So I know it's a number that's greater than one. Any number that's greater than one will have a, a positive exponent, like positive three, positive three. That's great. The question is, which one of these answers matches the correct number of significant figures? Just take two seconds and think about this. Now I want you to recall, do want you to recall that there really was no, there really was no decimal point over here beforehand. It wasn't there. So the decimal point really wasn't there. I added that. How many sig figs in this first problem? Well, there's no decimal point. That means my arrow comes from this way, goes through the zero, hits the six. Once I hit the six, I stop and I count all the remaining numbers. I have one significant figure. The correct answer to the first one is this one right here. 6 times 10 to the third. This one does not work. So 6 times 10 to the third, I wanted to check that number out. What does that really mean? That means 6 times 10 times 10 times 10. 6 times 10 times 10 times 10. And that's 6 times 10 to the third. Awesome. Let's try the next problem. Give it a shot. Okay, well, let's check this out. Here we go. I cleaned this slide up a little bit just so it's a little cleaner for us. Let's move our, in this case, our real decimal point. We're going to move our real decimal point over one, two, three places in between the first two numbers. So I'm going to have a, a power of 10 for sure. And in this case, this is going to equal 6.000 times 10 to the third. And that is the, actually the correct answer. Let's check this out. I had a real decimal point over here. If I have a real decimal point, when I count significant figures, I'm coming in this way. Hit the 6. Once I hit a real number, I stop. Yes, I count everything. 2. There were 4 significant figures in this number. There are 4. I see my decimal point. I got 1, 2, 3, 4 significant figures in that one. All right. Let's try another problem. Let's try another problem. Let's take 0. 0.0006. All right, let's throw that into scientific notation. Well, once again, you're moving your decimal point. Which one are you going to move your decimal point in between? All right, it has to be in between the first two real numbers you see. So I'm going to take my decimal point right up here and go now. One, two, three, four. I'm moving it four places over, in this case, to the right. And I want you to just have the number now. It's going to be 6.0 times... 10 to the, once again, count how many places you moved. 1, 2, 3, 4. 6.0 times 10 to the 4th. Okay. Is that going to be a positive or negative exponent? Now check this out. The ones that are positive, like the ones we saw up top there, was a number like 6,000. 6,000 is a number that's greater than 1. Anytime I have a number that's less than 1, but greater than 0, it's going to be a small number. The small number simply means negative exponent. There we go. So, this problem is answered correctly as 6.0 times 10 to the 4th. I want you to see I have two sig figs in my answer, 6.0. Let's count the sig figs over here. I'm going over this way. Hit the 6, stop, and count 1, 2. 
So I have two sig figs originally, I have two sig figs in the ending. I have a negative exponent because that matches the fact that I have a very small number. A number that is definitely greater than zero, but less than one. Awesome. Let's try another problem over here. And the last three problems that we're going to look at in this session of extra help is right here. So why don't you press pause, attempt these, and I'll give you my answers. Okay, here we go. Let's move some decimals. I move my decimal point from this spot right here to a 1, 2, right there. And my final answer becomes 3.10 times 10 to the, that's right, negative second. Alright, 3.10 times 10 to the negative second negative exponent matches the fact that it's a small number. Greater than 0, less than 1. I had three sig figs. I have three sig figs. 510, let's move our decimal point. Decimal point is kind of over here. We're going 1, 2. 5.10 times 10 to the second. Three sig figs. Three sig figs. Oops. Let me take that back, guys. Let me take that back. I think the original number was 510, and I see I made a mistake with my decimal point here. You just got to be careful. Even teachers here, we need to be careful too. Let's take our eraser, and we got to erase this answer, right, guys? We got to erase our answer over here. Right, this is how it's done. All right, this is how it's done. A little on screen editing for you guys right here. All right. So the original number was 510. And usually I'm very cautious about um, when I do my decimal places, I usually do this, right? All right, so that time I didn't, and it kind of like lost me in doing so. So I moved my decimal point one, two places over that way, and it ends up with 5.1 times 10 to the second. Just be cautious of that, all right? Be cautious of the fact when you're moving decimals, what was the original number? Because when I have no decimal point, counting six figs, the hour comes in this way, I should only have two numbers left, one there and one there. And that's what I see over here. I see I have two numbers as well. Okay, lastly, let's just check out the sig figs first, because that kind of threw us last time. My arrow comes in this way, goes through the zero, and I have three numbers left. So my correct uh, scientific notation is going to be 8.31 times 10 to the, in this case, 1, 2, 3. 10 to the third. All right, guys, I want to try a different style of doing that. We're done, you know, putting things into scientific notation. My question now is I just want to do a few numbers. Can you get yourself out of scientific notation? So we're going to work on that in the next couple seconds here. All right, guys, so here's two numbers. Uh, we're going to be given in scientific notation. I want you actually to unwind them and take them out of scientific notation. Uh, the first thing I want you to see here is the exponents. Look at them. This is a positive exponent. This is a negative exponent. This number right here should end up being greater than 1. This number right here, by the fact of nature that it's a negative exponent, simply means it's less than 1 and greater than 0. So if I want to make this number greater than 1, which way am I moving my decimal place? You're either going to move the decimal point 3 this way, or you're moving it 3 this way. And that's really all we're doing here. We have to move it 3 places. Okay, so it's 7.50, and I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3. It's right over here now. And there we go. So my correct answer is going to be 7,500. All right, and I have to make a little note here, a little asterisk. Yeah, there is three sig figs in there. Um, I know if you're actually on the on the money here, you know what's going on. There should be three sig figs. It only looks like two. Whenever that's the case, you just got to little put a little asterisk. There's actually three sig figs. So this is my correct answer right here. Okay, how about 7.50 times 10 to the negative 3? Well, this number, because I have a negative exponent, simply tells me it's a small number. A small number must be a number less than 1, greater than 0. 1, 2, 3. Okay, there's my new decimal place right there. I fill these up with zeros. So what I end up with this over here is 0 0.00754. Just checking out the sig figs, making sure. And notice that it is definitely less than 1, but it is greater than 0. And that's what a negative exponent is going to give us. All right, guys, that's all for extra help session today. Hope it was a blast.